Finally, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket has a firm launch date for the first time in more than three years. Cursed by a seemingly relentless flood of delays impacting almost every one of the rocket's payloads, Falcon Heavy made it within three or four months of ending its launch drought as recently as June of 2022. At the time, the rocket was more or less ready to begin assembly, but NASA announced late that month that the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, and supplier Maxar had failed to finish qualifying software needed to power its Psyche spacecraft. Designed to journey to and enter orbit around the Asteroid 16 Psyche, the complex trajectory required to reach it constrained the mission to a launch window sometime between August and October, when JPL and Maxar were both unable to properly test the spacecraft software in time for that window, they were forced to stand down and wait until the next earliest window, which begins in July of 2023. That left Falcon Heavy with three more possible payloads to launch in 2022, but all three were chronically delayed and there was little reason to believe that even one of them would be ready to launch before 2023. However, Falcon Heavy's single most delayed payload appears to have made a breakthrough, giving the most powerful rocket currently in operation at least one more shot at a 2022 launch. On October 7th, SpaceX sent out an email confirming that Falcon Heavy is scheduled to launch USSF-44 sometime in October and asking members of the media to register for press site access and remote camera setup opportunities. And most recently, the company is set to launch a Falcon Heavy rocket from Kennedy Space Center on Monday, October 31st. The launch is targeted for 9.44 a.m. ET. The assembly of Falcon Heavy inside SpaceX's main hangar at its NASA Kennedy Space Center LC-39A pad itself is the main sign showing SpaceX heading for a launch. Photos that SpaceX shared last month and earlier this month of preparations for Crew-5, Falcon 9's eighth successful astronaut launch, show that at least two of the four main stages that make up Falcon Heavy are already inside that hangar. One of the two new Falcon Heavy side boosters was clearly spotted on September 30th. The rocket's expandable upper stage was also clearly visible in a September 23rd photo. Notably, the upper stage stored behind the Crew-5 upper stage in the foreground features a unique gray band around the bottom of its airframe. In July of 2019, SpaceX tested another Falcon 9 upper stage with the same gray band which a spokesperson explained was meant to improve the rocket's longevity in orbit. USS F-44 will be SpaceX's first direct geostationary launch attempt, which explains why the gray band has reappeared more than three years after its first test. As of October 23rd, SpaceX officially announced Falcon Heavy in the hangar at Launch Complex 39A. Just take a look at all these beautiful engines. It brings me back to B-4's 29 engine configuration. The Center 9 just looked like a Falcon 9 surrounded by 20 extra engines. So, when will the Starship launch? Now that is something I can't wait to see. But back to Falcon Heavy's launch, to enable the high performance required for the mission, USS F-44 will also intentionally expend a Falcon Heavy booster for the first time. The rocket's two new side boosters will boost back to Florida and land side by side at LZ-1 and 2 but its new center core will be expended after a single flight. SpaceX has already finished converting Pad 39A's mobile transporter slash erector, which was previously set up for single core Falcon 9 rockets. The T slash E will eventually roll inside the pad's integration hangar, confirming that Falcon Heavy has been fully assembled and is about to be installed on the structure. The rocket will then be rolled out to the pad and brought vertical for static fire testing, a process that will likely begin at least a week before the current October 31st launch target. If testing is successful, Falcon Heavy will return to the hangar, having its fairing and USS F-44 payload installed, and then rolled out to the pad one last time. Stay tuned for updates on that ongoing process. Next up, I would love it if we could spend some time to congratulate India. 36 of OneWeb's broadband spacecraft took to the skies on October 22nd, launching atop a GSLV Mark III rocket. 
the most powerful rocket in use by the Indian Space Research Organization from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharakota at 2.37 p.m. EDT. Happy Diwali to all of you, so we've started the celebration already. We have accomplished the orbit very accurately, ISRO Chairman S. Samanat said after the successful launch, which coincided with the Festival of Lights celebration in India this weekend. The mission was the first one for OneWeb since February, when Russia invaded Ukraine and shook up the spaceflight landscape, among many other, more serious impacts. It was the second operational flight of India's GSLV Mark III rocket and the first commercial multi-satellite mission of its kind for the Indian rocket, a flight that was overseen by New Space India Limited, or NSIL, ISRO's commercial arm. OneWeb is building out a constellation of 648 broadband satellites. Before today, 426 of those spacecraft had reached orbit, all of them atop Russian-made Soyuz rockets operated by the French company Ariane Space. But the ongoing Russian invasion, which began on February 24th, splintered that spaceflight partnership, forcing OneWeb to look elsewhere for rocket rides. Unfortunately, there wasn't a huge amount of choice. Luckily, NSIL saw that the capacity crunch was an opportunity to win commercial business for the GSLV Mark III, a rocket that has only flown four times since its introduction in 2014, all carrying Indian institutional payloads. Radhakrishnan Dururaj, chairman and managing director of NSIL, told reporters on the sidelines of World Satellite Business Week in Paris last month that ISRO was looking into increasing the production rate of the rocket. ISRO placed an order in 2018 for 10 GSLV Mark III vehicles over five years, with a current production rate of three vehicles every two years. As he said, that production rate could attract interest from commercial customers seeking alternatives to existing vehicles. That production rate also would be separate from GSLV Mark III vehicles used for Indian government missions, including its Gaganyaan human spaceflight program. While a launch rate of 4 to 5 per year pales in comparison to the Falcon 9, which performed its 48th launch of 2022 with a Starlink mission on October 20th, he said he believed there would be commercial interest in the GSLV, particularly among satellite constellations that want to spread their launches over several vehicles rather than rely on a single provider. And although ISRO may consider improvements to the Mark III that would marginally increase its payload capacity, according to Radhakrishnan, the vehicle today should be able to serve commercial customers well. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.